Good evening. My name is Jeanette Ikevex. I'm the Dean of Faculty here at Yale and US College. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the second public lecture in our Artist in Residence series. Like most of our events this semester, we've moved tonight's online. And that means that many people who might not typically be able to be with us are here, albeit virtually. I'm thrilled to see so many alumni, parents, and friends of the college, as well as the local and global arts community, alongside those of us on campus. I hope you will regularly join us for such events in the future. This is the first artist in residence program positioned within a liberal arts and sciences college in Asia. And our goal is to bring both local and international artists to nurture a vibrant and diverse community within the college and in Singapore. Supported by the Tanshan Tuan Foundation through the Tanshan Tuan Chinese Culture and Civilization Program, the artists teach here at the college and work with our students, as well as working intensively on their own artworks, reflecting upon notions of Chinese culture in a transnational context. I want to thank our colleagues at the Tanshan Tuan Foundation for their generous and ongoing support. Tonight, I'm delighted to have Singaporean artist Chen Sai Wa Kwan, known as Sai, who is the third artist to join us in residency. His follows that of Andrew Yang and Krista Donner from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, who were in residence at Yale and US College earlier this year. Sai works in diverse media to create interactive sculptural and multimedia installation artworks that reflect his interest in the notion of play within daily life. And as you will soon see, his practice often challenges our habituated eyes by deconstructing and transforming everyday objects, found materials and situations, so as to invite us to make fresh interpretations of them. His works have been exhibited at the Singapore Art Museum, the Esplanade, and at the Singapore Biennale, as well as in Japan, Germany, and other festivals and institutions locally and globally. Alongside curator, artist, and educator, Dr. Wang Rubing, Sai runs Kama Space, an experimental project space that seeks to be a hub for creativity and criticism demonstrating the vital role of the arts in society. Sai will be speaking to us tonight about his past works as well as his current work uh, as an artist in residence. And this work is a very personal project that forms uh, the basis of his residency. It's a film about Chinese opera and the impact of migration in sustaining cultural heritage in Southeast Asia. Before we begin, I just have a few administrative announcements. First, I ask you to please not take any screenshots or recordings of tonight's session. Second, we would love to see you at future events. So if you're not already on the Yale and US mailing list, please click on the link in the chat or comment box and uh, sign up. Finally, we welcome your questions. Uh, if you have any questions, please enter them into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and Sai will answer them uh, at the end of the hour. I'd like to now introduce our moderator and host for this evening, Mr. Tom White. Tom is originally from Bradford, West Yorkshire in the north of England. He is based here in Singapore where he works as a freelance photographer. Tom also teaches documentary and photojournalism at Yale and US College. He has taught at Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism and at the International Center of Photography in New York City. In addition to his appointment at Yale and US College, Tom conducts photography workshops at the Objectif Center in Singapore. Again, my pleasure to welcome all of you and especially to Sai and Tom, to whom I'll turn it over now. Okay, um, thank you, Jeanette, for that introduction and um, yeah, welcome to our wonderful performance hall here at uh, Yale NUS College. Um, I'm just gonna reiterate that the question and answer um, session is open throughout um, Sai's presentation and talk tonight. So we would like to make this somewhat of a dialogue. So if you do have questions, um, feel free to enter them at any time. Um, and I can 
somewhat interrupt Sai and maybe you know ask him any pertinent or relevant questions before we get to the uh, the official designated Q and A at the end. Um, but without further ado, I'm just going to hand it straight over to Sai, um, so we can hear from him. Okay, sure. <laughs> Hello everyone. Yeah, I'm currently um, doing the artist in residence here. So I'll share a bit of my work, my past works, um, or some work in the circuit breaker sort of, um, until now what I'm doing. Um, yeah, uh, so I'll just share a bit of that and, and yeah, okay, here we go. Um, just... Okay, so uh, I believe everyone can hear me quite clear. Okay, um, I'll just reintroduce my five years old childhood to everyone. <laughs> okay, um, um, I would say that I like to destroy things. This is the very famous story from me that my mom bought me a, a, a watch when I'm five years old. The first thing, I did not till the time. I was like, I'm waiting for my mom to get out of the house, steal my dad's um, screw, screwdriver, start to open it up and understand what's, how, how it works. But then after I took out everything and put it back, it doesn't work anymore. So I'll just tell my mom, mom, it's spoiled. She'll buy me another one. I'll do the same thing. And yeah, I, I think we, we, I actually started that. So from here, yeah, um, this is part of my work. Okay, um, I'll call it everything that has a point makes a circle, um, which is a very interesting point for me because everything that Literally, if you pin down a square and turn it around, it always makes a circle itself. So what happens is I started to create this bicycle work um, and it, it, it's my solo show during the 2012. So it actually manifests to this no turn, this piece of work itself. So yeah, um, it's not in, con um, in year order for all my works. So sometimes it jumps to 2007, 2000, and then it comes back to 2016. So this piece of work um, that I'm actually introducing here is radiator and plastic bag, 2011. I like to play with daily objects. I was doing a residency in Aberystwyth University. And what happens was, it was a very fine January, well, turning spring. So I on my radiator, I was about to throw my chair, my trash off, and I got this plastic bag. Hot air floats. Um, what do I do with it? So that day I was playing with the plastic bag. I was working with the hot air. Um, and I'm just playing whole day like a little child, like what I did at five years old. Um, taking out things, letting it float. Um, without sticking, and it hovers over there for more than, well, a few hours, and I start to take the photograph, and that's it. That's, that's my day for, for, for art at that time. Same thing, um, this is called double cola, and double cola act as a container to me. I put pen, pencil with it, and it's always that kind of like daily objects that I work with that fascinates me. Um, this is a book, it's also called Calling Telephone. Um, I took it in a research trip in Bandar Aceh. And, and it's, it's just, just a telephone calling another telephone. It's, it's very, well, it's not, I would say it is not a very direct, but then um, I would not call it like, I will place the telephone over there, but it's accidental photogra photography. 
So that's my dinner. My dinner during yeah, 2011. And I was playing. My mom said, don't play with food. And I well, literally do that um, just to have fun with myself. And it is part of the work during the solo exhibition. It's called Untitled CG, Center of Gravity. Um, it was just a hammer that I used placed in the corner of a plinth. So um, this, this also part, part of it is called Rene 450 meter down under a photography that um, I saw someone just pull it down and I have to, I have to just document it down. So the city just go 450 meter down under rather than going the other way. So that's, that's part of the, the, the thoughts at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's the sign about that. Yeah. So, so as, as a sculptor myself, as, as an artist myself, whenever I go traveling, whenever I start to work, uh, um, I need traveling adapter to actually adapt. Um, so what happens is every time I go for a new show, I will forget to buy one. I will forget to bring one, so I'll go and buy one. And this, this is actually literally all the collection I have after all these years. And it becomes a beautiful rainbow. So that's called Adapt Adapter. Um, during Circuit Breaker, I did something else. I was just playing with my adapter again. So this, this is um, just created this year. So it's called Adap Adapter 2. So I'm just connecting four adapter together. Yeah, um, this is more of a much more playful work, I would say. Um, well, it's not that playful. I would, well, at that time, I always remember, there's always a lot of stories in my back of my stories on my artwork. This was done in 2007, when I literally have only one pound, one pound in my pocket when I go to my studio. So what do you do with one pound? Um, you can't buy anything, you can't buy lunch with it, and I'm hungry, and I sit down there, literally, I cut the one pound into half and call it 50 pence. So I have half, half. So I got two 50 pence right here. So, I, well, it's put on show and, I, well, I sell it. So I sell the one, 50 pence for quite some money. So it's good. So that's, that's how I, I, I start to work. So it's always small little things that goes around with me. Yeah. So after 2007, 2008, um, suddenly, there's this, there's this curate, curator who call, calls me a friend, um, say, hey, I need a hundred pieces of work. Hundred, we are going to curate a work which is 100, 100 artwork for, for all, the, all the artists. So everyone had to produce 100 artworks. We were like, oh, crazy. No, okay. Um, the logistic will be quite crazy. So what we did was, what I myself proposed was cut a hundred coins. That'll be easy to transport. So, so literally, I take hundred different countries. One coin is around four hours, maybe six. I can't remember. So by hand, um, I tried by machine before, of course, um, to actually use a machine to cut it through and but it doesn't work. It will just heat up the coin and everything. So I, I try to cheat, but I can't. So I have to go back to manual sawing, um, like two, two to three saw blade to in order to cut certain coin. So it's like the saw blade just become a, well, whole bunch of saw blade been there. So I, I, yeah, I literally cut hundred coins of it. But there's a ruling that. Well, if you are in that country, you can't cut that country coin. So I did not show the Japan coin over there. So that's the, that's the rules, yeah. So in Singapore, I can't show Singapore coins. Yeah, so that's the, that's the whole idea um, behind it. So that, that's, that's the playful side of me when I start to work. I need small little thing and to actually gel out with, um, yeah. So um, 
the child of me always was always there. Um, the next idea or next project that I want to show is called the rise and fall of 1.17. Okay, forget about the name. Um, a circular journey. Okay, it's a coordinate. It's a coordinate of Singapore. When I'm a child, I always think, um, what happens to the other side of the world? Um, we don't have internet at the time. Um, I think pager was like just invented or something like that when we are a child and that's a big thing. So we always think, what's on the other side of the world? So literally, um, I did Anthropo um, all the way and find out for this project, this idea, opposite of Singapore was, is actually Ecuador rainforest. So what I did for Singapore, this, this was in Singapore Binale, this project, this idea. So I literally sent myself there to go on top of treetop, 50 meter up, on, on, well, to get the coordinates, right? So rig myself up and enjoy the sunset and sunrise. So I got another counterpart who record the sunset and sunrise. We are both looking at the same sun at the same time, but directly opposite of earth. So we, we literally record the same, and I did a projection. I'll just show everyone this. So one side, one side is Ecuador, one side is um, Singapore. So I wanted to make sing people able to walk through the screen, walk through the two dimension of from Ecuador to Singapore at one time. So that is what I really enjoy. So uh, I'll just share a bit what it do. Objects, you know, you have these kind of uh, bicycles, coins, uh, plug adapters, and so forth. Um, you're trying to kind of look at the the object itself um, and figure out what kind of art it can become. Like, what can I do with this object? Um, a lot of it seems to be somewhat making them useless. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the adapters no longer work as adapters if they're all connected together. The the coins, once you saw them in half. Uh, it's no longer legal tender. But uh, it's, it's useless to me to have one pound. I can't buy anything at that time. So I'm just finding ways to think how it can work itself. For the bicycle itself, I'm just creating something that surprised me. I think the surprise element of my, the work itself is very important that I don't even know or I, I really don't even understand it at certain time which I, a lot of times I, I work with something without ideas, but then I walk on the street suddenly, hey, this works, this don't work. And some of the ideas that I have, it could be from three years ago to five years ago. So, so it's, it's random and not random. It's very subconscious. It's very subconscious for me, myself, to, to want to listen to myself, to like, in 2007, I even built my own piezo. I was just placed all over myself and record my whole body. What, what is it like? Just, just for the sake of fun. And, and that fun thing, I think, fun element is one of the most important thing that I, sh well, I, I think as an artist should have, which I think, yeah, I'm playing. I'm really playing. I'm playing that, that notion. So even for this... 
um, the rise and fall project itself, um, the idea itself, I just want to travel to Ecuador at times. <laughs> I just want to travel to the other side of the world. I haven't traveled the longer dis longest distance, so I flew there. I flew there, I rigged myself, I get people rigged myself up to the tree, 50 meters up um, on the tree top and sat down there feeding, with mos feeding the mosquitoes um, at 4 a.m. in the morning to shoot all the way to 8 or 9 in the, in the morning. So Singapore site can actually shoot at a time for me. So in the evening time, so I, I just want to play. I, I think that's really, really important. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I, I'll just show you all a little bit more on this one. Same thing. It's just working through a box screen. It's, a, it's, it's just like a small little motor box. It's a piece. So it was like in the morning, during the morning time when this came up. And yeah. Me? Okay. Okay. Um, um I'll go a bit more, I'll go a bit more um more research now. So, so there, there's a playful part of mine and then there's, there's a little bit more on research on, on certain things. Well, but I still play. I'm seriously playing. So this piece of work is called Sound of the Earth. Um, I, will, I will talk about talk a bit. It's, it looked like totally like a science experiment. So what, what I did at that time was I just want to listen to the, the earth, what's underneath the earth. And I literally go and record the earth and what's next, what's, what's next, what, I, I don't feel enough. So I went to Padang, I went to a lot of places to actually record the amperage and everything. So I dug out the earth from Singapore. Well, I think that's illegal. <laughs> well, we are I think on if air. you keep it in Singapore, it's okay, right? Yeah, don't I don't think take so. it somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, this piece, well, then, Every single bottle is, itself is a battery pack. So it actually translates that language and I use the same soil to make it into an amplifier to vibrate the whole amplifier. So the battery vibrates the whole amplifier. So it's that same earth vibrating the same earth, that kind of ideas that I'm working on. So it, it just looks like a mad scientist working. So yeah. So you're literally using the the electrical charge, charge of the, the earth. earth to then translate into a frequency, a sound using the, the um, earthenware speakers. Yeah. 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 So it's the same earth. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of your ideas um, are a little bit like that. You know, they have that, that idea of, uh, of almost a very literal idea mm. which you then kind of disassemble and then create something new from. Yeah, I haven't thought of that. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I haven't thought of that. But uh, well, yeah, that is, it's a lot of playing. Yeah. So that's in Fukuoka Asian Art Museum. Yeah. So we, we work a lot at that time. It was like cutting a lot of bamboos and everything. And it creates a very, very nice sound. It's just... Mm, 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 because it's, it's the different thickness of the earthenware that I created from the same mud. Um, so, so I create that amplifier itself to vibrate different, to have a different sound to vibrate. So it was quite fun. I break a lot of it. So yeah, yeah, well. So, um, so, so there's, a, there's a question here, um, you know, uh, around, uh, I can sort of put both of these questions here together. Um, one, uh, how would you distinguish yourself between, say, a, an, an artist um, versus a, an, an innovator? Um, you know, you're kind of, uh, the, the question here from um, B.B. Singh is, you know, what kind of 
what's the dis what's the distinguishing feature between yourself as an artist and and uh, he says uh, here an innovator? I think none. No, same thing. I, I think all of us. I would say that all of us are are just someone who want to create something. It's just that a lot of times the box the box that actually create for us um when we learn something we will start to go around that something that box and without breaking it i, I remember when i first did a presentation to students and um talk to them about okay this is what we're gonna do and next week they came back with almost the same thing that what i presented so the, their assignment was to create something new, but then what happens is they, they come back with exactly sort of similar. But then I said, there's something not right. So what I did was I literally take away all those visual for the next assignment that I supposed to show them. I took away a lot of things and tell them, okay, it's a free assignment. So that's what you're going to do. And they tell me wonderful, brilliant ideas and start to go everywhere. And I think that's, that's very different. But when we are giving, given something and you have to, okay, then we have to work around it and that's what you're going to do. Um, so when you talk about innovator and artist, I think it's the same thing. Same creative energy. Yeah, same. It's like scientists. Scientists is trying to find out something different. So to me, to me, scientists, artists, innovator, or I will call it creative people, creative industries. Um, that's a word that um, I think commonly people use now. Um, well, I think I steal it from an old friend, Method, Method Bridget, um, creative industries, which is important. Even photography, even, even everything, even how to have a design on a new phone. So yeah, everything it should be as one. And related to that, the materials that you use, um, you know, this one, you, you've chosen sort of specific soils and specific materials, but mm. then also the, the container for the soil. Mm. Um, could you talk a little bit about like the material, the choice of the materials there and how that came about? Oh, okay. Um, in Singapore, uh, 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 maybe I'll go back a few slides. I'm sorry. Okay. Th this one, okay. This one that is done in Singapore, um, particularly we, we got this very old memories of putting a lot of sweets in this big container and then um, right at the void deck, there's someone that will sell sweets or kacang putih, I call it. Uh, yeah. And then you, you, you just dug the, the sweets out and then there you go, three sweets for a 10 cent. So that brings back that memories when I have in a young time. So, okay, that is the thing I want to use. So, so that's how I actually choose this glass bottle. And the one that, um, this, is, this is the one in Fukuoka itself. Um, that's full of bamboo around there. The, the soil is actually dark from local and it's called Hakata clay. Where Hakata clay is used to make Japanese toy. Um, the door itself. So I went to the, the he's actually a farmer and then he, he repurified clay for people. So uh, we, we just went up to him and said, okay, we need two, maybe two ton of soil. Um, and he just used his excavator and just tuck it out, pack it, send it over to, to the museum itself. So we start to work with it. So a lot of different communities that come and help out in, in this project itself. So it's always local. It's always local material that um, I try to use. Not, not all. So, yeah. And I think in your, your series, which you're going to show in a, uh, next, is the, the Sounds Like series? Uh, uh, space Run. The Space Run. Okay, so we can come back to that because in, in one of your other works, mm. um, you talk about that, that local, um, you know, the local kind of context. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So let's let's just briefly look at the this one. The oh, okay. space drawing. Space drawing. 
series, yes. Yes, and uh, my mind are always confused, honestly. So I, I got different pocket here and there, and I, I like to do different things, a lot of different things at different times. So a lot of things simultaneously happen at once. Like I'm doing this residency, um, working out on a film itself, but I'm also doing some kinetic artwork just to keep myself occupied. And then I'll come back to here and I'll go back to there. So, so that kind of like, yeah, just to distract myself. So this space drawing series, um, it happens in 2007. This is my first try. This is called space drawing number one. So it's in Bourbon Square. So I'll, I'll just show you some slides. Just go through. And this one was done, where, where was this, the first iteration of this um, done? It's in UCL. In UCL. Yeah, I did it in UCL because I'm um, fortunate to have nine big rooms itself for me, myself, because it was assessment period. No one wanted to book the room. And I'm actually having an assessment at the time too. So I just book it. I don't care. <laughs> so how are you, as we, as we look at these, um, maybe you could talk about uh, you know, the, yourself as, a, as an Asian artist going over to another part of the world, going over to Ecuador, going over to Europe, uh, mm -hmm. going over to America to do this work, mm. um, you know, as a kind of Chinese diasporic artist in these other places, um, you know, what from your kind of heritage and culture um, do you bring with you when you go to these other places to make, to make artworks? That it's actually a very interesting question because I never thought of this, honestly, as an Asian going to overseas. When I, when I first touched down in UK, I remember I was so fresh. Um, I'm, I'm just like a piece of blank paper. Just anything that writes on me, I'll just absorb. Whenever I go to a new place, I was so happy to see new things. So, so things are fresh. Things are always amazing, I would say. Even bad things are amazing. Just on the street, I remember the first week when I walk home, someone was just telling me, Marijuana, marijuana, <laughs> something else. Da, 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 da. So that is like, I was like, um, okay, as an Asian, as a Singaporean, I never have experienced that before. That was quite something out of my context. So I was like, okay, fresh, new, what's that? I said, no, thank you, walk back to my hostel. And then things was just... Everything was fresh. Everything was fresh. Yeah. So, so, so I, I start to go for everything. I start to do 30 sculpture in 30 days. People say that I'm mad, but I think that's kind of fun. And then start to challenge myself um, on that point. Actually, I don't even know that I'm challenging myself. I'm just thinking that I'm having fun. Yeah. So this work is really, truly having fun. Um, I need to on the sound. Yeah. So, so yeah, we, this is this is part of my first series that I do do a trial. So that is like um just literally having fun. Oh, what? No, no, okay. <laughs> um, so what happens here? Uh, before you play this, just, yeah. So this is the same piece that you have here. No, it's different piece. Uh, but same, same concept. Same, yeah, same, yeah. same ideas, but um, it came with, um, I wanted, this is my first performance that I did for myself. Um, accidental performance. Because what happened was, um, the curator was asking me, okay, we are going to show this piece of work, um, Space Drawing One, cool, we like it. And like two weeks before, they were saying that, isn't it supposed to be a performance? I was like, uh, no. And okay, here we go. And I brought along my robes and I go there and do some tests. Yeah, it's going to be a performance. It's cool. And I, I started to do that. So a lot of times my artwork is always accidental or it's not choreographed, I would say. 
it's, it's a well choreographed ropes. It's a well choreographed drawing. But then um, at times it becomes accidental. I was so paranoid when they are telling, okay, I, am I going to really do a performance? So, so that, that kind of things that yeah, intrigues me. Okay. I'll show you guys. This is just a performance. Okay, I'll, I'll stop here. Health and safety. Health, Health and safety. safety. Okay. okay. Um, not not going to do it in, in Singapore. So, yeah. So, you did you did several kind of iterations of this mm. um, in various different places. Uh, you know, one thing I, I think for me that makes it that interesting is this idea of kind of drawing in space. Mm. Um, you know, the, the physical sort of line. Mm. Um, for me, that relates to kind of the, the idea of uh, you know, making, making art on paper. It's the same mm. thing, you know, if you think about, uh, you know, kind of the abstract Chinese ink drawings and so mm. forth, you know, that kind of just playing with the line. Mm. Um, because what happens was, I, I did a lot of doogling. Uh, I, I love to do that when I'm a child. You can see all my old, old textbook, you just draw, aeroplane, draw everything. Like, and then when you go to college, you start to draw. And then when I go over there, I, I, I just draw and draw and draw. I, it becomes bigger, like two by two meter wide. And then it, it goes a bit bigger and say, what's next? Um, I can draw the space. Um, yeah, so I start to draw a line in the space. I say, okay, how does it go? So I draw the next line using a rope. And I feel that the rope is not they do not have that physical strength. So that physical strength actually brings me into, okay, I should get a bungee, which it really taut and stretch. So it, it was meant to be a static before it become a video or performance itself. So I start to draw, again, accidental. Not accidental, but I, I was not satisfied with just on paper itself. So, yeah. And then the sound is very important. Oh, well. yes. Yes. Um, so do you want to uh, talk about the, the Sounds Like series? Uh, okay, you know? I'll, I'll just move on to the Sounds Like series. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, this, this is actually, yeah. Oh, sorry. This one, yeah, the sound here. Yeah. yeah. You can really kind of, with this piece, it's, yeah. it's really visceral. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move on to the Sounds Like series. Sorry. That, that's space drawing number seven. Right. Yeah, that's space drawing five and space drawing seven itself. So, um, yeah, the something and nothing, I'll skip that too, should I? We can come back to that maybe okay, later. Yeah. But yeah, I'd like to yeah. talk a little bit about the Sounds Like series yeah. as well. So, so th that's more of linking. Um, and I just like to talk to myself a lot of times. Um, I, I like to close, close the room, lock up the room, um, off the light and then do my own thing and not been bothered or something like that. So a lot of times I'll just daydream and just start, start to talk to myself. So this is like a big karaoke. Yeah, in a karaoke, you sing to yourself. So to me, you, you speak and it travels back and you listen to it in a short a sort of delay, but non-delay. So I, I was satisfied and not satisfied. I was playing in between that. So it was in, yeah. It's, it's in Paris, this one. So, and where, where does the, the title of LinkedIn come from? Oh, LinkedIn is actually in Chinese called um, listening, um, deep listening to yourself. Mm. So, sort of like it's a bit more, um, it's more deep in thoughts. Like, you don't, you don't LinkedIn with two years, you just listen very deeply itself. So, so that's how the title and the work comes by. So only one person can speak at one time. So that's the whole idea about it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the kids are holding up. So that's that's more of a bigger sculpture itself. Yeah. Not, so, not so much of a found object. No, 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 no. It's not a found <laughs> object. Yeah, but but it actually derived from a found object. Like it derived from when we are childhood, we use that kind of like can and then we pull a string over and and you talk to your friend. It's like a telephone. But then this telephone, I just want to pull and then back to my ears. 
So it actually started off from again just childhood play. So yeah. So from this, this, this made in China. So so this is literally one sided. Yeah. So what happens was the um the people from the well the villager itself came down and then we invited them to sing. So, yeah, that, so the, uh, play that a little bit further. Um, that one? Yeah, this one, this one here. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, as you go, go further on, I would, I would recall seeing this. And you, you told me once something about this, uh, what she's actually singing. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, it's, it's always um, the singing itself, um, or the villager itself, um, they don't have a script. It's always very, yeah, singing about their life. On what they are doing now, what they are talking, they are trying to sing to people, and it's unspeakable. Oh, oh, when they start to sing, playful. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's them. So it's, it's always them to actually do that. Yeah. And then the, so the, the, the tune themselves that, that they are singing to. Hmm. Uh, this to the mountain. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's it's always singing to the mountain because um it's like mountain mountain surrounding them and echo itself um in the small village. That's how they actually from one village to another village is really far away. So that's at certain time that's how they communicate by singing. And then the other side will sing back. So 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 that 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 residency over there was really fun. Um we we enjoy a lot, honestly. Um, just been with the local itself it was quite amazing. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So so yeah, we I, I did a lot of sound project itself. Um, and working with a lot of sound recent years from from. Oh, maybe I don't know. I can't remember the actual date, but this called surround sound speaker. So you listen, you, you get all the sound that actually come in to listen to, yeah, to your ears itself. So for the for series like this, um, for series like uh, this sounds like series, um, for the work that you do um, with the the earth, you know, the sounds of the earth and so forth, yeah. there seems to be also a somewhat, you know, as well as a sort of connection to the self, a connection to nature, um, the idea of mm. you know being playful um, but also something very very uh scientific about it you know the inquiry um into I like the word <laughs> you know the sort of scientific inquiry into the the material of the object the ideas um you know we have a couple of questions here which maybe you could touch on uh which to me seem to be related uh both about the sort of the exploration of the world um mm. in terms of you know the melding of art and scientific uh curiosity if you like an investigation and then you know how can artists use that to address uh, wider issues of the day such as you know, climate change and the environment and so forth i think artists has really been addra um, addressing this issue quite a lot um, on environmental change and um, there's a lot of artwork since joseph boys to now um, everyone has been you know mentioning things to now um, um, to me, I, do, I don't really think that, okay, I'm going to be very conscious on this. I'm going to be very conscious on the environmental change or scientific. But from there on, like, I like to visit my friend's laser lab um, when it's just, just something that I like to do. Um, laser lab, um, 
when I'm in UK. So I, I like to go to an Anacort chamber when I'm there. So um, I'm just fascinated by new things that actually come along to me. But then um, whether it translates back to my artwork, maybe it takes three years to four years to actually do it, or maybe five, I don't know. So it, it takes time to settle in for me. I always got this rule of time. Um, today, if I think of a good idea, I will just, okay, good. Drop it down, catch it down. Tomorrow, wake up, I'll look at it again. Um, okay, rubbish. I'll throw it away. Or, mm, it's good. Then I'll move on to the next day for, for at least three days. And I'll just place it somewhere. Um, maybe down the road, five years, seven years, two days, one day later. I don't know. When things I, I feel is correct, I will do it. I will, I will just make it happen. Like the adapt adapter was really fast. I, I got a few adapters. I was like, okay, adapter, 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 plug into the plug. Oh, it's like, it's like Rubik's thing. And then done. Okay, done. That's my work. And it's, it's just like that. But some work, it takes me like years to actually develop. Take me years to actually work on. Um, so I collect a lot of things, a lot, literally a lot. So that's the, well, that's the challenge about artists. We need space. We need space. Which, yeah. which actually brings me to, the, um, to your work that you're doing here at the residency. Mm. Um, if we could take a look at uh, some of, I think you have some stills um, yeah, yeah, yeah. of this work in progress. Yep. Because uh, this work has been um, kind of sitting with you for a long time yep. already. Yep. Um, the ideas around this work. Um, you know, so perhaps if we could um, yeah, take yeah. a look at some of, of the examples of that. Okay. Um, and then, you know, can you talk a little bit about uh, where this came from? You know, uh, as we know, this, this residency um, is uh, linked to the idea of kind of Chinese culture, um, Chinese civilization and so forth. So this is a very specific Chinese cultural art form that you're making mm. um, this, this video art research piece on. Um, so perhaps you could talk a little bit about the, the research that's gone into this, um, the, where it comes from in yourself and your, your own heritage and so forth. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think the, the title called Da Gu, Da Gu is just my, my eldest auntie. My eldest auntie. So um, again, it's, I, I think... Um, it's going to be very personal again because it's my aunt. Someone that I know and know for so long, but then I really don't know in depth. Because every time when, every time when we went over to visit um, our auntie, it's like festival seasons um, or someone's birthday and then everyone, oh, okay. And when, when later years when I graduated, we sort of like, understand what she's doing. She's always away. She's, she's away performing. At that time, I, I, I was like, okay, she's performing where? And then that's it. Oh, okay. Next year, we come back again, visit. And this one incident, I'll say, can I follow you? That was like, okay. She said, why not? And then I follow her. And then I started to get interested in what she's doing and understand what she's doing. And my grandfather, well, my god-grandfather was actually um, a teacher in Hainanese um, opera. So during that era, just by teaching and singing um, and performing, you, are, you, you can make a living or very well in living. But then now, at this point of time, um, no, not really, because it's, it's like a dying trend um, to me. Um, not just to me, well, to, to them, because they can only perform like two times a year. They will only do a performance two times a year. They would, when we had a conversation, they were saying, um, okay, we only come here now. We only perform in Malaysia, sometimes in Thailand. And that's, that's about it. I'll, I'll show you just a bit of clips. Like, um, the interesting part really about this was um, 
they themselves, they themselves have been trained at least for five to six years before they can actually perform. Like my aunts, they, they literally have to go through that like an apprenticeship. And then, um, and she's the, she's the last of my grand, grandfather, disciple. So, so it's like, yeah. Interestingly, at that point of time, when I sit down and listen to the opera itself, I know, I, I really don't understand a single word. It's my language, it's my dialect. Um, I'm, I'm a Hainanese, so I sit down there, uh, they were like performing, I was like, wow, okay, very nice clothes. Um, oh, that's okay. No, no, from visual, I, I, I don't understand. So, I, I, I don't understand either, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I started to talk and I started to do, a, well, talk to them and understand how everything came about, come about. And after one or two hours, after one or two hours, it started to become like, okay, I, I can grip a few words, a few sentences, and I totally understand what the whole storyline is about. So that's, that's kind of like the interesting part of it. So it's like different, different, it's, it's for, yeah, on that. So that's, that's the back theater of it. So for, for me, is to maybe to relocate myself back because everyone, most of us are diaspora from China. Some of us, well, some from in Malay, um, Indian descendants, um, but for, for my roots, it's always by the sea, by the sea of China. So they travel down to Malaysia, travel down again to Singapore, then um, travel down to Indonesia, come back from Indonesia to Singapore. So, so it's always about the sea that came down to this part of Singapore. Yeah, so it follows some of the kind of migration routes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's a trade route. Always a trade route that um where money goes, where job goes um, is is a very simple simple logic at that time because it brings better better living, it brings better living and the migration goes. Yeah, actually, I can I can interject a, a question here as you talk about um, you know the movement of people. Mm. You know, uh, there's a there's a question here about. Uh, your work in general embodying a kind of a loop-like quality, um, if I can read it here, you know, a, a sort of cyclical quality, materials returning to form, of output and input, interacting and enhancing each other. Um, does this link into any kind of philosophical or spiritual dimension to the, to the work that you do um, and to the film that you're making now? Um, you know, the, is there a spiritual kind of, dimension, philosophical dimension to, to the opera as an art form as well? I would say yes, but I try not to be that philosophical. <laughs> I try to be a bit more simple. Um, I, I think I'm a more of direct artist, but um, I read a lot of Lao Tzu. Um, there's one, then you start with two, and then, you know, what comes around goes around, blah, blah, blah. And then I, I try to not go too deep in philosophy. It's a bit cliche for me. Of course, to understand my own aunt, I think that's very important part of, of that, that overall thing in, 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 my, in my life itself and even in, as a Chinese diaspora. Because um, like a lot of us came, came to, came, a lot of my, the, the greater, well, ancestor came from China and then they just came to work. But then my grandpa was a teacher in that, so he came here to perform. It's another layer to it as a performer itself. So it's to entertain, to bring life, to bring beauty to, to the life over here. So, so I'm, I'm trying to explore. So I know very little. That's why I'm trying to learn. If I know a lot, I will not do it. So that's, that's always my, my take about art. If I know something too much, I will just stop. That's it. Um, that's, yeah, I will not make that work. 
So again, it's this idea of kind of learning through investigation, right? Of yeah. which play yeah, is yeah. A, a form of that. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, definitely on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Go on or yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So so yeah, that's that's part of it. Um, I'll skip the common space then. Yeah, this is common space, a space that I run, but um. It, it's just a comma. It's something in between the lines that um, me, me and my partner actually got this idea to create. So for Cheetah Chatter, um, this work. So, Again, very loop-like. Yeah, it's a loop. Yes. Very circular. Yeah, it's a loop. Yeah. So, so we, we, we play around, we are chatting with each other. So, so it always comes around. Um, subconsciously, it comes around. So there's another work. I can't, I can't, I have to go to Mongolia. It's not my work, it's by Michael Lee. Um, so it's called excuse. A lot of excuse that you give to your friend that you can't come to this webinar because I'm, I'm in the toilet or <laughs> I can't go to this place. Because So he's making up. He's not making up. He's asking people to make up excuses. Part of it. So this is your hands work. Questions, games, and this is Yang Jie's. And the current work now is Bu Ziyang. He's actually trying to echo the whole space what it used to be. Yeah. So perhaps um, as well, you could talk about you know both as an artist and mm. then as someone who is, works curatorially as well. Mm. Um, there's a there's a question here about the idea of um, you know what what aspects of the work um, are open to kind of participation. You know, some of your work uh, it requires people to kind of interact with it, mm. and some of the artists that you're working with in in common space as well. You know, once you you enter into that space, there's a there's an interactive quality mm. uh, to many of the artists' work that is that you you're showing in this, especially in this twelve. Solo. 12 solo shit series, right? Yeah. So um, where do you kind of, you know, is there a, is there a line between uh, where the, the artwork is a, a reverent object and then where the artwork is something which you can kind of interact with? And No, there is no, no. We do not have a definition for other artists' work um, because that's, I think, the art expression. Because whenever we start to say, okay, do we invite artists in, um, we respect fully, honestly. So like Bu, Bu Ziyang, he's a painter. He's, he's, really, he's a painter and he told us, this is the second time I'm doing installation. I was like, okay, cool. It's a space to experiment. It's a space to maybe bring you somewhere or to, to have a full stop on something. That's why we call it a, a comma. That's why we call it a comma space. Um, to bring to your next stage. Or you want to present something. So we don't have an exact definition of what comma space should be. So, we, we, yeah, that's, that's our take, I think. Um, we, we were like greatly, inf not influenced, but... I think when we went to Taiwan, there's a lot of individual space to, um, we went to UK, there's a lot of like underground spaces, literally underground, not, not underground, underground. But then, um, then there's a gallery and then um, doing a lot of crazy experiment. That's how we actually, hey, let's do something. Just in front of our studio, why not? I can see good artwork. That's, that's worth it. So we do something. That's about it. Oh, yeah. and, and the work that you're doing here with, with students in the college mm. um, has a similar kind of, kind of ethos. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think for, for the student itself, um, I'm actually working a lot on, um, on the kinetic work itself. So the work itself, that's why I do not want to put a definition in their work. I did not want to give them a full guideline um, of what they can do, they can't do on this particular work itself. So it's actually up to their own expression. They propose to me what they want to do. So 
yeah, they have to write their proposal, they have to write their, their, their sketch, they do their mock-up, um, then we discuss about it, how can it go further? But not just, okay, yes or no. But they, they, this, some of them say, okay, I want to suddenly change the full thing of it. Go ahead, why? And then we, we discuss about it and then we move on. Move on to see how we can actually jow out. So it's more of like uh, treating them more like an artist, more than a student, I would say. They, it's more of a collaboration. I bring in materials together, we work. Rather than they... Yeah, I, I think that should be the way for me, personally. So yeah, this is just some, some artist that is working. And we got a few discussion on that, yeah, definitely. Okay, fantastic. Um, I think we are, we're now at, at just gone half past eight. Mm -hmm. um, time flies, right? Uh, so, so there's been, it's great that there's been some questions come in. Um, I've still got a couple here that I can get to. Um, but if, if anybody has not yet uh, asked uh, a question that they would like to ask of Sai, um, or if we haven't fully answered your question um, that you have already asked, then please feel free to, to enter that in the Q&A um, and we'll have a little, a little session here where we can talk about yeah, some yeah, of these things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, just to come back to um, the idea of, of here, there's an, uh, another question again about sort of the idea of heritage, right? Mm. Um, the connection between sort of your, your heritage and then sort of uh, innovation. So mm. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to guess um, that this is a question between kind of like looking forward and, and kind of innovating in your art mm -hmm. and then drawing on sort of past culture, past heritage, your own personal stories, the, you know, the, the heritage that is there in your film. Um, mm -hmm. You know, is there, is there a tension there? Um, does it flow for you? Like how, what's the relationship between heritage and innovation? Heritage and innovation. Okay, interesting. I'm struggling in between two because I always find that heritage is a burden. That's, that's a very literal for me because um, you've got a lot of history and you'll follow your history and you need to follow your history. My mom said that. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, mom said that. So, so that kind of like things, but then you have to break away from it. Then, but, but then you have to come back and understand your own history first before you can break away. So there is always a constant struggle like my mom said, don't play with food. I always play with my food. So there's always a constant struggle on that. So for me personally, heritage itself is important. It's important because um, without that, um, I will not know how my dads came about from where, um, what kind of hardship that they have been through, why is, how this place was built. Um, not just like that. It's, it's never just like that. So my, my, when I went away from Singapore for seven years, my dad said, hey, you better come home on the first or second years. And I told him, didn't you actually migrate too? He said, yeah. And I told him, yeah. So what's wrong with me going away to see other things? So, so, so they're kind of like, okay, so migration is my heritage. <laughs> so that kind of things like, I, I, I moved to another country. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's pretty well sums up for my dad and me. Yeah. I think, you know, for me, that somewhat plays into the idea of the, um, you know, the traditional arts as well. So, mm. you know, with the, the Chinese opera, you mm. know, it's, it's very rich tradition. Yes. Yes. Um, and there's, you know, there's certain kind of conventions that must be maintained within that. Yeah. Um, I mean, is there space for kind of uh, innovation within that art form from, you know, what you know of it, what you've seen, what you're, you're, you're documenting with that? Um, there, there, is, there's, there is a lot of old things still being passed down from my grandpa, I think, um, to my aunt itself. Um, take for example... Um, I remember I was talking to um, people in, when I went to China, um, in Teochew, Caozhou, Caozhan. I, I speak a very fluent Caozhou. 
Um, so I speak Teochew to them. They were like, wow, your Teochew was so old. It has not been, it's not been evolved. But the people in China has really evolved to different things. So I don't know. It feels like the, the things that left China at that time has maintained certain tradition, but the things that is in that place has evolved to a different thing. So, so, so that, that's, that's like, to me, um, wow. Yeah, it's really wow. Like the Indian cuisine in Singapore sometimes just maintain that old tradition. Yeah. Almost like when you go away from somewhere for, I don't know, seven years or 15 yeah. years and you come back and you say, why, wow, something has changed here. Yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah so so that's, that, that, that's the kind of things that I, it, well, it, it surprised me. And in all my work, I think surprises is very important um, to myself. Yeah, it has to, okay, um, so what's next? Um, just be, sometimes be scared. I think be scared is good. Yeah, be scared, really scared to, to actually work with something because once I'm scared, I, knew, I know that I'm doing something new. So, so whenever I do something new, I'm scared. So it's cool. So on the, um, you know, kind of jumping off of that idea of, of yeah. going places new or doing something new, yeah. um, you've had your work displayed in many different countries. Yeah. Um, could you just talk briefly about how some of those things come about? Uh, do, you, do you go somewhere, like, you know, go to Ecuador to make the work? Um, or, you know, if you're doing a residency somewhere, uh, do you apply for these things? Are you invited to go there? Um, it's one of the questions here in the chat is, uh, you know, how, how do these kind of opportunities to travel and make work in different places come about? Okay, um, as an artist, I got a dream. I got something in my, well, my bucket list, I call it. Every year I have to travel one different country in the, one totally different country every year. So if I'm 40, oh well, if I'm 50 years old, I have to travel 50 different country. Different totally. But this year, COVID, um, I haven't traveled to anywhere. So, well, that's, that's, so I have to make up for next year. So two country, hopefully the pandemic is over. Anyway, so um, yes, I do propose. Um, I remember that was like back in 2007, um, we, I propose a lot, a lot to actually get projects done um, to different countries. I always project, I always propose to different country so that I can travel there. And well, people pay for it. Why not? So I, I get get that done. So I'll find new places to go to. So that's my one of my criteria that I need to check. So some are invited. So you you know people people there and then we, we were like good friends and then um, or you're exhibited there, they like your work and they re refer you to the next person and say they will email you or, or well, text you and then we, we just work things out. Yeah. That way, uh, Ecuador was, I propose because I really want to get to the other side of the world. So I literally write that proposal and then I'll say, okay, um, need to get air ticket, um, need to get a lot of battery packs because I'm in the forest. I, yeah, I, I can't charge anywhere. So, yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, so it's a combination of two things, right? It's a combination of both, both, you know, proposing and applying, looking yeah. for opportunities. Yeah. And then once you make those opportunities for yourself, um, other people will look and say, hey, I, I like that. Come here. Let me invite you to yeah. participate or apply or so forth. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but do the work, right? So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just do something that you are interested in um, that, or you really feel happy with or maybe even you're sad with. I think that's very important because um, Frightened, sad, um, all this actually give me some motivation to do certain things. Yeah. I was really scared. Oh, well, you can ask my partner when I'm scared, I'm, I'm angry, I, I, I get all kinds of frustration things. But then that's how it brings me to the next stage, I think. Okay, wonderful. 
Um, so at this point, uh, we're getting close to, to quarter to nine at night. Okay. Um, I'm sure Zoom fatigue is, is kicking in. Um, I'm going to take, say, maybe uh, one or two more questions and then, and then we'll wrap it up um, for this evening. Um, also, we, we have uh, one question here. Um, how do you see your, your latest pieces? Um, so I'm guessing the, the film that you're making uh, to the, in relation to the idea of play. Uh, you know, do you think your works take on the, the next level of play? I think as the, the film around the... I'm Chinese still playing with it, honestly. So I couldn't answer this question because I'm still working on this piece of film itself. Um, I'm playing with the visual, I'm playing with the sound itself, even um, doing double. So I'll not go too much on detail, honestly. We, we will, I think we're yeah. gonna, once the, the film is, is yeah. complete, um, then we'll be able to sort of talk a little bit more about that um, yes. and find a way to, to showcase that piece of work. Yep. Um, so that's, that's one, stay tuned. Um, <laughs> you know, and we can, we can kind of you know, discuss the, those ideas once the work is actually completed. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems to me that it's, you know, it's somewhat, somewhat more kind of serious, the approach to that, um, to the subject matter and so forth. You know, that, um, seriously sort of, playing. Seriously playing. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think seriously being seriously playful um, is a, is a good point to end this evening. Sure. Um, so, do we? I don't think we have any more questions. Um, I hope I hope we've entertained you and answered any questions that you do have. And um, I'm just gonna uh, wrap up then uh, for this evening and say you know thank you, Sai, for All right. thank you sharing your work. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in and um, this is this is the last uh, public event that uh, Yale NUS College um, will be doing this semester um, if you are a member of the public then we do have a, a link to sign up in the chat uh, for uh, notification of, of further events and so forth in the mailing list um, I'd like to thank Sai again I'd like to thank um, all the staff here um, for our, in our performance hall for making this run so smoothly. Um, Jeanette for introducing uh, this evening, uh, the Tan Chin Tuan Foundation for uh, making all of this possible um, with their sponsorship of the Artist in Residence program. Um, thank you all for this evening and take care. Good night. Good night. <laughs>